Welcome back to What Are Teen Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the Stridsvarn 74. It's a tier 6 Swedish medium tank. It's located on the westbourne of Studjanki Encounter, and this one is under the command of Della Perino. Yes, he's back and he sent us another couple of replays, so we've got uh, two replays in this video. Well, the Strid 74 is a combination of an M42, the old tank from during the war. Um, but it's got an upgraded turret with a 75mm gun and it's powered by two Scania Varbis engines generating 174 horsepower each, 170 apiece. It's basically a redesign of an old tank for a new idea. They needed to get a better gun mounted on the tank. They needed a light tank basically to complement the Centurion 81, uh, the Centurion tanks, the Strid 81 that Swedish had bought and he spotted an enemy tank, it's a 87. Timing his shot to get it right. Yes, he gets one in. And, oh, he was spotted. Okay, so he's had to pull back and it's a Jagdpanzer here. Gets one round into him. The reload time is actually quite good. It's normally just under five seconds. He's got 4.07. Ouch, just got smacked by Artie. 219, but he puts another round into the Jagdpanzer Fia. Now this tank has 15 degrees of gun depression, so it's an absolute monster to fight over a ridge line. Yeah, because you are going to come off worse as that Jagdpanzer Fia did. You don't want to fight this tank over a ridge line if you can help it. And we've got another contender. And he's only got six degrees of gun depression, if I remember correctly. But the RT's hit us again. 178 this time. And, well, we can see that Filipperino's down to 42 hit points. That's all he's got left. Start yeah, they're telling him to pull back. Or is he... Uh, yes, I think he was telling Filipperino to pull back, I'm afraid. And he needs to. He hasn't got enough hit points to stay there. That's unfortunate because the enemy RT just got two accurate shots on target. Okay, so he's pulling all the way back. That uh, doesn't necessarily mean, though, that he won't be uh, taking an active part in this battle. You know Filipperino, he's an excellent player. And he'll probably find some way to actually engage in the battle and get uh, lots of damage. Okay, we've got the meal one going through the factory area. He gets one into the l l hull, which is a weak spot. Uh, that one hit the turret, which is obviously strong. Try to get the side of the turret if you can. Yep, that worked. And one more to kill him. He's turning turret. Yes, he got him. So he's got his first kill. Um, second kill, sorry, no, because he already killed the um, Jagdpanzer Fia. He couldn't get an active quick shot on that Patriot. And the enemy is now capping. It's an encounter battle, so obviously that's where they would be in the centre of the battery. He's now attacking the Striv 74 and the enemy team. And that Striv cannot use his gun depression to good effect. So he's actually in a bit of a pickle here. Because the problem with the Striv is it's got a very tall silhouette. Which makes it very vulnerable if somebody's shooting at it from a long range away. You can see that T-3485 is taking a bit of punishment as well. That one hit but didn't pen. Now the other problem with the Strid is you don't get a whole lot of ammunition, I'm afraid. He goes to the side of the turret in the hope that he might get an ammo rack on the Patriot, but he was spotted. Now, can he get another shot into that guy? He's getting very close to the factory. Yeah, he's taking a very high view to see what's going on where the tanks are. I think he could probably take out that strip. He gets one in by auto aim. Can he get the other one in? Well, no, just not the wall down there, but he can probably get this guy if he pops up one more time. With two tanks up on the enemy at the moment. Whoa! <laughs> okay, and a quick look around the corner. Safe he can go. Looks like he might be able to get a shot at the uh, Patriot or at the Striv 74. 
Pulls back. There he is, there he is. He was thinking about it, but obviously if he had stayed there, the tiger might have got a good shot on him. Okay, tiger. It's 15 degrees of gun depression. Oh, no, he was spotted again. If he pops up, the tiger will try to nail him. It's that guy who was spotting him, it's the IS-3. But he can pop up next to this building and I don't think the Tiger will see him until it's too late. He gets one, he's got this wreck to hide behind. Gets another one through the side. The Alpha is 150 by the way. Gets another shot in, using the wreck creatively. The Tiger's now a two shot. That's one, into the Coppola. Can he get the second shot to kill him? Oh, he gets hit by the SU-8. He's stunned. The tiger comes into view, and can you get a shot? Yes! So, three kills now. Considering he's only got 37 hit points left, it's pretty good going. That IS-3 is now one shot. Yep, he's got that one too. He's racking up a lot of damage on these enemy tanks. Considering he's only tier 6, he's taking on a lot of tanks that are higher tier than him. The IS-3 was tier 8, the Tiger was tier 7. It's a very old design, the Striv M42, as I said, it's mid-war. And they started building this tank in 1957 to 1960, and they continued in service until 1984. So I mentioned the, uh, the 170 horsepower twin Scania engines. It's also got torsion bar suspension, so uh, that's a kind of um, mid-war design because, of course, the German tanks had torsion bar as well, and so did the American ones for that matter. I think that one of the reasons why it does have such a tall turret is because of that 15 degrees of gun depression. It's uh, entirely defensive as well because. You want 15 degrees of gun depression to shoot over ridge lines. They made 225 of these from the old tanks, converted them to new ones. They were going to, they did consider at one point fitting an AMX 13 turret onto the uh, M42, which of course you know is the M4257, it's in the game. But uh, they didn't go ahead with that because the problem was the turret ring for the AMX 13 ton turret was actually too big to fit onto an M42. Yeah, he's taken a lot of damage. One shot from an RT would be enough to take him out of the game. He is winning by one tank at the moment. They've got the advantage. Can he get a shot into the turret? The, he's looking this way. Didn't fire in the right direction, though. Okay, there's supposed to be enemy RT over here somewhere. We know that one of the enemy RT has gone up to the north. The Lorraine, he's just been killed by our Super Hellcat, but there's still an SU-8 out there. That was the guy who shaved off seven hit points, or was it, no, it was five hit points earlier in the game. It'd be rather nice if we could get rid of him. There's the Shrift 74. Where is that SU-8? I reckon that strip's going to pop up any sec. There he is, using his gun depression. Doesn't help though if you're being shot at by another tank with good gun depression. Well, in this case, you can see that Filipperino wasn't even using gun depression to take him out. It was just being very, very clever to actually use the cover. Now I reckon the SU-8 is probably in this corner, right up in the northeast corner of the map. But he's not been seen. 
His sixth sense hasn't gone off. He's just blind firing into the bush at night. You don't have a lot of ammunition on this tank. Very low load. It's 42 rounds only. And he is in there. I just saw the tracer coming out from the bush and he's just blind killed an SU-8. Now, so he switched back and he's using standard ammo now. That's all he needs against the Sturu Mill. Very thin armour. He must have hit the tracks there. Another blind shot. He's got one round of AP left. Doesn't want to get too close to the Sturu Mill though. He could have the 128mm gun. If he does, he's capable of doing 490 Alpha. Of course, he might have the shotgun, which of course is the same gun as on the Dicamax, which is only a 105mm. And has he been seen? No, he hasn't been seen yet. One round of standard AP. This is where he can use the gun depression, but the Stuart Mill has also got very good gun depression. Are you still there? Yes, you are. That's one. This is for the kill. Yes! Wins the game! Well done, Filipperino. That's a victory on only 37 hit points. Here's the end of battle result. That was an ace tanker game for Filipperino in the Strift 74. He got a hand of God for surviving the battle and received damage from four different enemies. A bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, he got six. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. And a five for effect for doing more damage than the hit points to his own vehicle. He got a very rare medal here. This is the Nichols medal. You have to kill at least four enemy tanks or tank destroyers than a medium tank in one battle. And they have to be at least one tier higher. Killing four enemies that are superior to you is actually quite difficult, I can tell you. I've only ever had one Nichols medal on one of my accounts. I think I may have had it on another account. But they are rare medals. You rare rarely see them because you have to kill so many high tier tanks to get them. He also got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in the game and a top gun for getting six kills. He actually ended up with seven, one short of getting a Radley's and he did most of that with very low hit points indeed because as you saw in the battle he killed the Yank Panzer IV but at the moment he killed the Yank Panzer IV the enemy RT hit him for the second time and that meant that he ended the battle with very virtually no hit points left whatsoever. If we look at the team score, we can see he's top of the table with 3,581 hit points. The next high scorer being the Patriot on the enemy team, 2,380. And then the Renegade on his own team with 2,365. He had the highest number of kills with seven. The next high scorer being the Sturry Mill with three. And then the Renegade and P43 Tour on his own team got two kills. And the Patriot on the enemy team got two. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the top on that one. He's got the top in all three columns. 1,692 is the only player over 1,000. 821 went to the Renegade and 648 went to the Markovsky Go, the 453 TP. He fired 36 rounds, got 33 direct hits and 26 penetrations to splash. Damage of 3,581 hit points, of which 1,772 were at more than 300 meters. So... A fair amount, actually. It's about half and half on damage, long range and short range. Four hits received, two penetrations, one non-penetration, and three hits by way of splash damage from the enemy RT, who, well, two of those came from the Lorraine, the other one came from the SU-8. He got three enemy vehicles spotted, ten enemy vehicles damaged, seven killed, and 681 hit points of spotting assist. On a free-to-play account, he earned 39,170 credits and after repair, ammunition, respawn, consumables, and yes, he did fire premium ammo, or some of it, and 9,243 experience uh, credits uh, loss from the game. 1,692 base XP, no multipliers, so that's all the experience points he took away. A uh, very good game, you might say, for the Striv 74. It's a difficult tank to play because it's so tall and it's fairly slow compared to other medium tanks. Maximum speed is only 40, uh, 45 kilometers now, so you're basically toodling around the battlefield very, very slowly, very prominent. But uh, he made it work for him, use the terrain, use the scenery, and uh, use the wrecks as well to get the kills on the enemy. So, very well done. Let's have a look at that uh, kill on the strip, by the way. He actually hit him 
once, I think, with an HE round for 192 hit points, but it was enough to, to send him off. He was blind firing into that bush with HE. Um, one of them hit the mark and did the damage that killed the enemy SU-8. So we're all done on that blind kill. So let's have a look at the second battle. And this one I think you will enjoy as well, even though it's a very brief one. The second replay is in the T-29, the Tier 7 American Heavy Tank. We're located on the attack team on Siegfried Line Assault and battle is underway. Well, you can see that he's got two marks of excellence on the barrel of his gun and I'm sure that's the 105mm, capable of 320 Alpha and penetrating 198mm with standard ammo and with the APCR it'll go up to 245. This is generally regarded as the best heavy tank at tier 7, even beating the Tiger 1, mainly because the turret is incredibly tough, uh, although the hull is fairly weak. Now, as I said, this is a rather brief battle, so pay attention, because you could learn something from this one, how to win a game that quickly. Okay, who's his first victim? And, oh, he's just been struck by a T-37. Yep, that's teaching him a lesson. 358. So he got a high roll from that one. Enemy Panther M10 out in the field. Blind shot at him. Yes, he did hit him. 270. Low roll. Okay, watching for that Panther. He's going to go into town now. Or is he? No, he's decided he's going to go round the town. It's a VK-3001P has been spotted outside town and now he's got a VK-3601 which is the tier 6 German heavy. He's going to side scrape on him. Is he pulling back? There he is. Took a round in the tracks but it's no problem. In fact now he's facing two enemies including a 53TP. Took another round in the tracks but the VK-3601H is gone. Okay, there's lots of them around the corner, including a Lerva. Lower plate. Well, he decides to take out the T-37, the guy who hit him earlier. The Lerva's going to be waiting for him when he comes around the corner, though. Oh, he's not. Side of the turret. Yeah, go for the Amorak. Got a nice hit. 360, which is a high roll. Go for the lower plate. Yep. 282, the Lerva's down. Okay, so push his way through. We've got a KV-2 and the 53TP. KV-2 first. Easy. Yeah, and he's gone. He's happy about that one. 53TP now. Side of the vehicle. Tried to go above the tracks. And he gets a kill shot. He did take a hit from the 53TP for 450, which is a high roll. But uh, he just shrugged that off. He's got enough hit points. He can do it. Okay, we've got a 45 TP over there. Could probably shoot between the down the street. Yep, and he gets a kill shot. 45 TPs down. That's his fourth kill. Who's next? He's siding his way through the enemy tanks. Okay, SU-152 up on the hill, and he's getting close. He wants that kill. He could have shot, but if he had shot, oh, he's got like AB-90 as well. Okay, he's bounced around. The SU-152 hit his turret. Okay, here we go. Side of the turret. You, you go to the side of the gun because you're more likely to hit the Amorak. Now, he did take a big hit there from the SU-152. 366. Now, we know the IKV-90B is up here somewhere. And there's only five enemy tanks left. There's the IKV. Takes him out one shot. That's his top gun. I did tell you it would be a brief battle. There's only four enemies left now. Skoda's over by the... Oh, he's... He's over the other side of the square. He's just died. There's only three enemies remaining now. A Borsig, a T P-43 and a Panther M10. Now, the Panther and the Borsig could definitely take him out of the game. P-43 to... Well, 
maybe. There they are. You can see where they are now. There's the Morsig. Okay, that's a priority target. Fires around in 414. High roll. There goes the P43 turn. Only the. Uh, oh, the Borsig was just killed then. I thought the Borsig was dead. And there's only one enemy left. It's the Panther M10, the one he hit earlier. And he's over there right at the edge. And he's, we've been spotted. Oh, he's firing one ear, so it's very cheeky. And he's gone down. And that is the end of the game. We're still just under five minutes left on this battle to go. Another victory. I thought you might like this one because the end of battle results show that was a third mark game for Philip Perino in the T29. Yes, he's got his third mark of excellence. He got an ace tanker in that game, a spotter badge for spotting at least a thousand hit points of damage, hand of god for surviving the battle, having received damage from four different enemies, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits, he got six, a duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him, a fire for effect for doing more damage than the hit points of his own vehicle. He got the high caliber for dealing the most damage in that game overall. He also got a top gun for getting at least six kills. If only he'd taken out the boys I thought that he had actually or got a shot into the Borsig. Uh, if he'd taken out the Borsig and the Panther M10, he would have got a Radley's, but he was denied on this occasion. They were just too far away. Uh, but a third mark of excellence is very, very welcome indeed. And congratulations for getting it. Let's have a look at team score. Top of the table with 3,393 hit points of damage. The next high score was the Striv S1 with 2,444. And after that, it was the Object 7032 with 2,361. Should be noted, both of these are tier 8s. He's a tier 7, and he was defeating higher tier opponents in that game. When it came to kills, he had the highest number of those with 6. The next high score being the Borsig with 4. 3 kills went to the Lerva on his own team. And when it came to base XP, yes, he's got the highest in that. In fact, he's the only player to get over 1,000. And he's got the top in all three columns. 1,496 base experience points. 953 went to the Lerva. And 932 went to the Object 7032. He fired 14 rounds in that game, got 12 direct hits and 11 penetrations. In fact, one of the missed shots, I think, was the one he fired originally at the IKV-90B. He was holding his fire on the SU-152 because I think he wanted to get a closer shot so he could follow it up. But uh, yes, so uh, one splash as well. 3,393 hit points, of which 628 were at more than 300 meters. So most of the damage done at close range. Nine hits received from the enemy, only five of which actually penetrated four non-penetrations and 925 hit points of damage blocked by armour. You saw that the big hits that actually hit him were the 53 TP and the SU-152, and they did hit him hard because they took away hundreds of his hit points, uh, just like that. Four enemy vehicles spotted, ten enemy vehicles damaged, six killed, and 1,809 hit points of spotting assist. He earned 42,024 credits on a free to play account and after repair ammunition respawn and consumables and yes it was the consumables I think really that hit him in this game because he actually ended up with minus 8,326 credits for the game but I don't think you'll mind that in the slightest because of course you've seen him make credits in other battles and of course now he's got his third mark. 1,496 base XP same again uh, for to take away because there was no multipliers in the game but oh what a game that was Five minutes long, just over five minutes for a 10 minute assault game. And he just literally scythed his way through superior tanks, higher tier opponents. And he just taking them out of the, the game just like that. It was a, a masterclass in how to deal with an assault game. I hope you enjoyed that replay. In fact, both of those replays. If you did, please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Tell other people about our channel so they can come and watch these great replays, especially if you happen to have a replay on our channel. And uh, do leave a comment down below because it feeds the YouTube algorithm and makes sure other people see our videos. <laughs>